Welcome to Seniority Authority, the podcast where I track down experts to answer your questions on aging. I'm your host, Kathleen Toomey. Let's get smarter about growing older. I think many of us would agree with the adage of being older but wiser. Personally, I wouldn't wish to return to my angsty, awkward teenage years. We have hard-won wisdom that serves us well. But what most of us are unsatisfied with is how our bodies change with age. And many of us long for the easy fitness of our youth. In general, we have to work harder to stay fit, which is so important for a long and happy life. Want to learn a few secrets on how to stay fit at any age? Stay tuned. Thanks to our show sponsor, the Riverwoods Group, Northern New England's largest family of nonprofit retirement communities, where active adults find community, purpose, and peace of mind. Visit riverwoodsgroup.org. Now let's hear from today's guest. Welcome to Seniority Authority. I'm your host, Kathleen Toomey. Today's guest is Rico Caveglia, author of the Ageless Living book and podcast, which has many hundreds of followers. A certified personal trainer, nutritionist, and athlete, Rico has dedicated his life to promoting wellness through his consulting company in San Diego. Welcome to Seniority Authority, Rico. Hi, Kathleen. It's a pleasure to be here. Nice to see you all the way from San Diego. I'm sure the weather is great there. Yeah, we do have about the best weather just about anywhere. It's about 70 degrees, nice and comfortable today. That's awesome. Let's talk about what inspired you to create the idea of an ageless living lifestyle. Have you always been a fitness coach? Well, I haven't always been a fitness coach, but when I moved to San Diego in 1980, I was looking for something new to do. And I just happened to meet somebody who was starting up a new personal training business. And we actually opened up, I think, with the very first modern personal training studio in San Diego, 1982. And so we just got that going. And I was, I, so I was become a personal trainer and worked with people. And I saw how, how much fun it was, you know, and, and beneficial to get in shape yourself and then you can also help other people to get in better shape and transform their life and then just about a two years later my father died of, of lung cancer now he was one of the most healthiest people i ever know he was never sick but he was a poor kid that grew up in the depression he smoked cigarettes for 60 years and all of a sudden it just caught up with him and he died you know so then i i realized that you know, there's so much, in those days, people didn't realize how bad smoking was, right? Just like nowadays, so many people don't realize how bad, you know, being so stressed and rushing around and eating junk food and not exercising and all those, not getting enough sleep, how bad it is for you. So right there, I, I decided that, first of all, I, I didn't want to become old and sick and die way too young. And I, so I wanted to learn all I could about what the body requires to stay healthy and energetic all of your life. And then I could help other people. So I began researching, you know, why are so many people becoming old and sick and dying way too young? Because now we know science tells us our genetic potential is actually, we, we could stay healthy to 125. Yet, as we know, most people are turning old and sick in their 60s and 70s and dying. And so, so that's why I, I began to develop the, the research and say, why is this happening? What can we do about it? And that's how I developed what I call the ageless living lifestyle, which is a complete mind, body, and spiritual wellness system of proven strategies that I, I'm very confident will give most people the best opportunity to avoid disease in old age and live a much healthier, long life. What is your ideal or typical client for ageless living? Yeah, I, I, I would say people from 50 on up who... Usually, I, I like to work with people who are successful and busy people because they know that it takes you know a lot of effort and work to be committed to whatever you're going to do if you're going to be successful. But there's so many people like that, but who realize that they're just not as healthy or as energetic as they used to be, and they're they're prematurely aging, so that they know they need to do something about it. You know, so those are the kind of people that I really like like to work with because I know they'll 
they'll actually stick with it and, and commit to what they need to do and, and they'll have really good success. So there's a certain amount of dedication that is involved in making this a success. You have to stick with the program. That's what's important, correct? Well, absolutely. Just like anything, anything you want to be successful at, you have to commit to it and, and it, it takes effort you know, to, to be successful in any aspect of your life. But, it, but it, you really don't have to beat yourself up. You know, you don't have to go to a boot camp and you don't have to do all these things that are so difficult. It just takes a consistent effort of learning, you know, what are the basic, which, which we're going to go over today, the basic things that you need to educate yourself on and, you know, you know what is the best nutrition for you as, uh, personally and what exercises suit you best and then just be consistent. That's all it takes really, a, a consistent effort. Yeah, and I think that is... The, the challenge with most folks is you need to be consistent, you need to stick with it. And so that's why I'm really excited that today, for those of, of you who can't go out to San Diego and work with Rico uh, personally, which I would love to do, you're going to give our listeners your top 10 suggestions for how to live healthier. So everybody who's listening, take out your pen, start start listening. This is years of wisdom that Rico is sharing with you right now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, working with people all these years, I always wonder why so many people have a hard time sticking with a, a healthy eating program or an exercise program. And so what I came up with, first of all, number one, you have to believe that you can stay healthy. You know, if you buy into the, to the normal narrative that most people believe in, well, it's just the way it is. We're all going to get old and maybe end up in a nursing home and so people just kind of buy into that and they just accept that that's normal but even though it may be normal it's not natural you know our natural state is to be healthy and energetic all of our lives so the first number one thing is you got to believe you got to believe that you can stay healthy and you can be fit and energetic all your life so so as you know the, the saying you know what you believe you can create absolutely if you don't believe something it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to be to be successful at. And then the number two thing, I think is the most important thing is, is you have to be living your life purpose. And I believe that we're all eternal spiritual beings that we're here on this planet for a short time. We have a divine purpose in our life. When you're living your purpose and you're excited about what you're doing here, you're making a difference in, in other people's life and you're enjoying your life here, then that's gonna motivate you to take care of your, of your physical body because our physical body is our gift. You know, however you think of the creative force or God or whatever greater, we have this physical body. And it, it's our gift to, to live our purpose here on this planet. So when you, when you realize that, then you'll realize that, well, I better take the best care of my physical body as I possibly can. So I'm here for a purpose. So that, that's really the key right there. Once you tune into that, then you'll stay motivated to take the best care of your physical body. And then number three is, then you got to realize you have to take responsibility for your health. You know, what we call in America health care, it's really sick care, right? They try and take care of you when you're actually sick, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't really learn about, about prevention and we don't really learn, we're not really taught about what our body really requires in order to have good health. So you got to step up and take responsibility for your health get educated about what you personally need. And again, it's really helpful to get some coaching, but there's no excuse, you know, as you everybody knows these days, we're overwhelmed with information. So there's plenty of information about it, any subject that you want to learn about. So there's no excuse for not getting educated to know what your body requires and what you need to do. And then number four, this is maybe a little controversial one, but if, if, if at all possible, uh, avoid prescription drugs and surgeries and hospitals, except for an emergency. You know, I've seen it so many times in so many of my older clients, you know, once you get on that downward spiral, taking one drug and then causes maybe some other side effects and they give you another drug or get into surgeries, it just begins to take your life force away. I mean, there's some cases where you, where, yeah, drugs and surgery can be an alternative and they can be helpful, but it's actually, you know, the third leading cause of, of death in the United States is, is being in a hospital where you, either you get the wrong medication, you get bad surgeries, or you uh, get some kind of infection and die. So it's a dangerous place. So there's so many ways, you know, natural ways to 
to heal and to, to try and heal your body. So again, you need to get educated and try that. See, we had the whole system backwards. What they call, what we, now we call alternative medicine is really, that that should be mainstream medicine and drugs and surgery should be an alternative if, if, if that's necessary. Well, that, I think that there are some things that only medication can solve, but I to what I would say to your point is understand what impact lifestyle change could have on your condition. So do you have a condition that you could change by increasing your exercise or eating differently? And I think how I would interpret your point is understand if there are things you can do now that would reduce your need for medication. Some cases you can't. Some cases you need that life-sustaining medication, but, you know, stop a minute and see what you can do to change, to change that. Absolutely. That's well said. Well, just one more point on that, on that subject is that, you know, for acute situations, you know, like you get into an accident or you're bleeding to death or, or, or you have broken bones or you get injured, our mainstream medical system is fantastic. It can save your life and put you back together. But for most chronic illnesses that we see doctors for, not only is the remedies mostly not, not very successful, but they can be downright dangerous as, as, as well. So most of our chronic illnesses are caused by unhealthy lifestyles. In other words, we created it ourselves. So, that, But as you said, yeah, you, you got to really look and see how you're living first and what you can do yourself, and, and that'll make a big, huge difference for us. And then number five is, unfortunately, you know, everybody, I think everybody knows this nowadays too, you know, we live in a very toxic, you know, polluted world, our water, our air, foods, there's so much chemical toxicity everywhere. And so you need to learn to do some, some basic regular detoxification programs. And there's, again, there's a wealth of information on the internet of people that offer, you know, coaching and how to do a detoxification program. There's books, there's seminars. So you need to learn how, how to detox yourself on a regular basis and because everybody's toxic. There's no way you, you can avoid it. There's all kind of chemical additives in our food, they're in our water, in our food, they're in our building materials. So, so learn how to do a little a, a basic detoxification on a regular basis is another thing that's really important to keep yourself healthy. And then number six is, of course, nutrition, eating food. Now that's such a complex subject and there's so much misinformation and information and different ideas and different diets. I can see why it's overwhelming and, and can, very confusing. So I came up with a diet to end all diets. It's called the seven word diet. I like that. I like the diet to end all diets. That sounds promising. What is your seven word diet? <laughs> Eat a variety of whole organic foods daily. Oh, if good. You, if you would just realize that you got to eat real food, eat, your diet should, put, should be at least 80% of real food. Real food doesn't come in a package or a can or a box. It's what's grown in nature. It's, it's organic fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and some whole grains. And then some healthy animal products that are raised healthy. They're not in a cage and they're not given hormones and they're fed in their natural environment. So all those things, if you just eat what, what I call, my very first book that I wrote way back in the 90s was called Real Food, Real Fast. It's how to make healthy, fast food. So you just got to eat real food. And, and that and, and real food, again, you don't have to even learn how to read a label because it doesn't come with a label, right? It comes right. with Mother Nature's discovery. And, and that's not to say that there's not some fairly healthy foods that come in a package. I eat some of them, those myself, and you do need to read the labels. But, but really what I recommend is, because we're all biochemically unique. I mean, what could be one amazing health food for one person can be almost, can almost kill somebody else like nuts. You know, I have a friend that if he eats any kind of nuts, you have to rush him to the, to the emergency center because he can almost die. So you have to know, you know, find out what, what really, foods are best for you. And here's a really good tip for our listeners. Here's a way that you can determine it's pretty accurate whether a food is really good for you or not. So let's just say maybe when you eat oranges, 
don't feel quite so good. So you say, well, maybe the audio is not so good for me. So here's what you do. You take your pulse and say your pulse is 70, okay? Then you eat that food, whatever you want to test, whether it's an orange or it's a piece of uh, bread or meat or whatever it is, or, or, or milk, and then eat it. And then wait up a couple of minutes and take your pulse again. And if your pulse goes up about 10 beats, that means your body is struggling with that food. That means it's having a hard time dealing with that. So that food is probably something that you shouldn't eat. So that's one thing you can you can figure out at home. But I, I really would recommend that if, if, if at all possible, you know, uh, consult with a qualified a nutritionist or a naturopathic doctor to really determine what foods are best for you, what real organic foods are best for you. And that will make a huge difference. You know, what we eat is really the most important thing as, as far as weight loss, as far as having energy, as, 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 as having good health. Our, our diet is... is the biggest factor, more than the very biggest factor. So you really need to get a handle on what you're putting in your mouth. I've also heard the adage that you should shop the perimeter of a grocery store. Yeah, so right. try to stay on the outside of the aisles, produce, meat, dairy, all everything on the on the perimeter, try to stay away from the packaged and processed foods as much as possible. That's exactly right. All, all these things, all these sale things, and all these, yeah, in the middle. I mean, it's not to say that there's a few of those things okay. We once did a, a, a video, a friend of mine and I, of how to shop. And that's what we did. We went around and filled up their basket and showed you, like, maybe just a little bit. You could have a few little things here, but the main part of your basket should be all your fruits and vegetables and whole grains and all real food. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. I have to tell you this, it's kind of funny. I remember when I first was getting into all this, and, and this was before really health food became really popular, mainstream. Mm -hmm. and I, remember, I remember going into a Ralph supermarket here in San Diego one time. And in the middle, they had this little stand, a little table with some things piled up on it. And they had a sign that says, health food. Like this is a little table. Well, what's the rest of the food? It's unhealthy yeah. food? Yeah, we're selling you all this crap, but here's something that might be healthy. But we want you to buy all this other stuff. It, I don't think they got it, but for me, it's just like, what? It was like, whoa, it's so funny. Yeah, very ironic. Yeah, that's funny. If you're getting smarter, help us reach more minds. Leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Tell your friends to follow us on social or subscribe to our newsletter at senioritiauthority.org. Okay, so then number seven is you've got to keep moving. You know, a lot of people have a aversion to the word exercise, you know, so you don't have to think about exercise, but you've got to move. Here's an interesting study that was fairly recent at some major universities. I don't recall exactly, exactly all, all the exact details. But they had two groups, and it was, it was based on weight loss. So they had one group, they had them exercise real intensely for an hour every day. And the other group, they said, you don't have to do any intense exercise, but just keep moving. Don't sit for more than about 30, 40 minutes. Get up and move. Just keep moving throughout your day and be active. And guess what? At the end of the study, the group who just moves regularly throughout their day lost more weight than the people who did real high intensity exercise. Wow. That, well, I think that's reinforcing because I do think you're right that a lot of people have an aversion to the word exercise. And yeah. <laughs> there's one thing I've learned in a year of doing this podcast is that being physically active is so important in, in every aspect of aging and just, just continuing to move and, you know, use the, body that we're given so right. it's move it or lose it absolutely so yeah what i teach is what i call functional fitness and and pretty much i like to show people how you can do a complete full body workout you don't need any equipment you just use your own body weight you know just basic stuff you know, basic squats and push-ups and stretching and basic things like that will really will serve you quite well you don't need to go to the gym you don't need any equipment at all it's not that sometimes those are worthwhile to do and valuable but just Really, it's about movement. So, again, it doesn't have to be anything real difficult or real intense or real, real hard, but you just got to develop a program where you're going to be moving throughout your day. And I'm sure this is, 
actually old now, but you've heard that term that sitting is a new smoking. Yes. That's the worst thing. You know, we sit way too much. So try not to sit for more than about 30 or say 45 minutes at one time and get up and just do some movement, you know, walk around, do some stretching, do some movement, do a little extra something, and then go back and, and you have to sit down again and do some work. So just keep moving. That's the main thing. Good. Number eight is to slow down and take some time out. How do we, Kathy, how do we ever get into this rush society that now we think that we have to, everybody, everybody's so, everybody thinks they're so busy, right? Everybody talks, oh, I'm busy, I'm busy. I got to do that. We think we have to accomplish so much. You know, technology is great. It does allow us to accomplish a lot more things, but we got caught up into it that we think now we think we have to just keep on accomplishing, doing and working. People are working 12 hour days. Why, you know, why are you doing that? It's just stressing you out and prematurely aging you. So take some time out, slow down. If you can learn to meditate, that would be really helpful. But if, even if you don't, just take some time to slow down and relax for a while. And, you know, the old saying, smell the roses, you know, just breathe and relax for a while. Take more time to, to slow down and just relax. And, and, you know, stress is something that is, you know, stress is, we know, it's, it's the main precursor to most illnesses in the body nowadays. So if you're, if you're feeling like you're stressed all the time and, and that you feel you're rushed and you think that you got so, you're overwhelmed and you're behind, you're going to change your, your story you're telling yourself. Slow down. And just ask yourself, if, if, why do I have to rush? Why am I in this rush and think that I have to accomplish so much? You don't. Well, and also one technique that I've heard that I think is a really helpful way to do this. Sometimes you are stressed in a situation that's not of your own making. So you're in a situation and the situation itself is causing you stress. Take three large breaths, inhale, hold them, exhale, and just try to send the message to your mind that you have a minute before you react so that it's, it's all about, as you said, it's starting to retrain, but going back to point number one, it all starts in your mind. You have to commit to doing this and wanting to do this. So that's a, that's a tip that I think can, can help you mentally slow yourself down. Absolutely. Always go to your breath. The breath is our best tool that we have. If you're feeling kind of agitated or stressed or take deep, slow, long breaths and it'll, it'll calm you down and on the other hand if you're feeling a little sluggish and a little slowed down then you can take some what's called like in yoga it's called breath of fire where you're going shh, 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 real strong deep breath and that'll wake you up and energize you so always yeah go to your breath that's really good Kathleen that's that's one of the, that's the best tool that we have for anything you know it's always anytime anything is whether we're not we're, have, we're feeling pain or we're feeling tired or we're feeling stressed Go to your breath. You know, start with your breath. That'll make a big difference. And you always have it with you. <laughs> always there. It better, it, it, right. It, it has to be there. It better be. <laughs> or you won't be there. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and then number nine. Now, these are not only just for health, but for anti-growing old strategies. Is to keep learning. You know, the, you know, I'm learning more now than I ever have in my, in my life. You know, there's just so many things open up and things you want to learn about and do and experience. And there's, I don't know how anybody could ever say that they're bored. You know, I mean, I mean, I, I wish I had much more time to, to explore and learn and all kind of different things. I mean, it's there's just an infinite amount of things that can be really interesting and exciting and motivating for you. Well, and I think, I think anyone that's listening to this podcast is already doing number nine because they are seeking out right. learning opportunities. And if you're listening to this podcast right now, you have figured out, number one, how to get a podcast, which a lot of people are still learning. And number two, you're attracted to this because we provide practical information. We are we interview experts on different topics so you can learn different things. So, you know, if you're, if my voice is coming between your ears, then you're succeeding at number nine. Absolutely. That's such an important point. Yeah. Yeah. Again, thanks for your good efforts that you're putting out. Yeah. So just keep learning. And, and again, there's no, 
excuse for not learning these days information is everywhere so we have access to so much things and it's pretty exciting and then number 10 and this is actually the best one of all and i think this actually is the number one anti-growing old strategy is to enjoy your life have fun you know sometimes i I used to speak to groups before covid you know and and sometimes i always like to ask say raise your hand if you're having a lot of fun in your life and a lot of people wouldn't raise their hand. And actually, I talked to some of them, and they and they got so stressed, and so you know, into their so busy, so many things they got to do, they didn't even know what fun would be anymore. You know, they get people get so carried away. So life's supposed to be fun. Life's supposed to be a struggle. Yes, we have challenges, but life should be fun. And here's a real important point: is that many years ago, this is way back in the, I think in the eighties. They did a real comprehensive study of centenarians, people who lived to be 100 and were still fairly healthy and, and cognitive. And so one of the main questions they asked them was, why do you think that you lived this long and stayed pretty healthy? And over 90% of them said, because I enjoyed my life. I had fun. That's the most important thing. You know? So if you're not having a lot of fun in your life, you better ask yourself why <laughs> and start having some fun. I, I think that's really important and i think that right now in our country people think about aging as loss based like i you know i'm no longer this and i'm no longer that and i think it's easy to fall into that trap where you bemoan the fact that you are not as you were and i think we neglect being grateful for where we are and and being grateful and finding the joy and the happiness in what we can do. Even if we cannot, we're not 16, we're at a different age, but that we can still enjoy life. We can still find happiness. We can still find pleasure in life. And that's really important. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, physically, we're not going to be as strong or energetic as we were when we're younger. Absolutely. But you don't need to be. And there's other things that are more important. You know, when we're younger, we're so much more into all the physical stuff. You know, how, how strong am I? How how good of an athlete I am, or how good looking I am, or how much sex can I have? All those things. That, that's fine when you're really younger. But older, it's we need to be tuned more into our spiritual path and how we can make a difference. And what I like to tell people: the reason that you need to stay healthy as you age is because. We need more people as they age because as we age, we acquire wisdom and we acquire lots of knowledge. And so we need more people to stay healthy so they can use that knowledge and wisdom not only to help solve all these monumental problems that we're having in the world today as humanity, but also to be role models and mentors for younger people. So we have to shift as you know, we go through different stages in our life. So when we get you know, later in years, we need to shift what our, our priorities are and, and really what what we can contribute and what really can bring us bring us pleasure. And really what brings you pleasure is, is when, when you can help other people and serve other people and make a difference in what ideas and things you can come up with, you know. That that's actually be more pleasurable than, you know, playing baseball. I mean, right. But it's all good, but you know and, what I'm saying? Yeah, and it goes back to your number two, which is is having a purpose. It's, Absolutely. It's being committed to being healthy, having a purpose, which is why you want to be healthy, why you want to live long, finding joy, slowing down, taking the time to reconnect, moving your body. These are all really good things that we can do and we can use this to reset our expectations of of how we live our life. With all these 10 things, once you start putting them into practice, how long, Rico, would you say it takes for people to change their habits and see the benefit of something like this. Yeah, what I found working with hundreds and hundreds of clients that if you'll commit to 90 days, within 90 days, you know, of developing and, and, and learning to implement your complete wellness strategy, which includes, you know, getting good sleep and you know, eating healthy food and exercising and changing your mindset and reducing stress and having fun, when you begin to develop all those programs and put them into play on a regular basis within 90 days you'll you'll if you stick with it for 90 days you're going to get so much 
good results, you're going to feel so much better, you're going to have more energy, you're going to look better, then that should motivate you to keep on going and realize that it's, a, it's an ongoing process. It's not something you just do for a short time. It, it, it's, it's a whole lifestyle. You know, you've got to develop a, a, a lifestyle of creating good health, but it pays so many good dividends. I mean, you can just have so much more fun, you can accomplish so much more, feel and look better. So just stick with it for 90 days and then you'll see some great results. I think that's I think that's a very realistic goal. And I also Absolutely. would say give yourself some grace. So it's so easy to start off and say, I'm gonna do all ten of these things, do them every single day, and you know, then you have an ice cream Sunday or then you don't get you have a bad night of sleep. Don't don't give up completely. Just reset, recommit the next day and Maybe you take two or three and you work on those for the first 30 days and take two or three more and work on those for the next 30 days. You know, changing habits and mindset is powerful, but not easy. So, you know, feel free to break it down however you'd like, just so it you can start seeing a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Again, well, well said. And again, if possible, if you can get a trainer, if you can get a coach, you know, get somebody to help you. It's it's well known now, you know, that coaching is the surest and and, and fastest way to achieve any any kind of a goal. So if you get some help, it'll make a big difference and get you going on the right track. Yeah, and feel free to pop us a question in the show notes. Pop a question to Rico in the show notes. Ask us. Tell us what you first tried and how it worked and. If you want to get some support with this, Rico has a fantastic book called Ageless Living, which you can find on his website. It is a companion to his podcast and to his consulting practice. And you can find the link to Ageless Living Lifestyle in our show notes. So you don't have to do it alone. You can do it alongside Rico as he as you read his book. And I want to ask Rico a few things. We know that you're really healthy, but we're going to do this lightning round of Fast Five. Tell us your guilty pleasure. Guilty pleasure. Well, let's see. I do like to eat a fair amount of healthy dark chocolate. Okay. That's, that's <laughs> good. That's good. What is your favorite healthy practice among all your healthy practices? Well, I would say it is exercising because you know I've been playing sports and moving my body on a daily basis. So I mean, I, I, if, you know, to me, it's I, I'm, I'm just always doing something. I'm riding my bike or swimming or working out. You know, just, just doing something, moving my body, being active. It just feels so good. What's guaranteed to make you laugh, Rico? Let's see. Well, the only thing I can think of offhand is if if I get a chance to watch some old Steinfeld. Those are always funny, aren't they? Yeah, those okay. are those are great. And sometimes that's what we need on a on a bad day is yeah. just a go to. Tell us the last book that you loved. I don't know if it's the last book, but there's a book that I really loved. It's called Spontaneous Evolution by Bruce Lipton. Oh, I it's haven't a, read that. Oh, it's, it's amazing. It tells you how we're always controlled by where we get our information from, right? And in the early days, it was from you know from the church and all that stuff, and then we moved into science, and now we're we're moving more into getting our information from more spiritual sources. So we're moving into a, a whole realm of, of scientific spirituality. It's, it's a fascinating a book. Of, uh, all, yeah, it's, it's a great book. Okay. All right. Put that on the list. And uh, you live in a beautiful place, San Diego. But if you have to escape, where's your favorite escape? Oh, escape out of San Diego? Yeah. Oh, well, either, either up to the mountains, you know, up to the mountains. But I really like the tropics. It's really warm, you know. It's fairly warm here, but we don't have really that warm ocean water. So I love to get out like the, the, the Caribbean sometimes and maybe go swimming in the really warm water. Okay. I like the tropics, yeah. All right. I wouldn't disagree with that, especially in the winter of New England. Thank you so much for sharing all your wisdom and sharing this very motivational topic with us. I feel like these are really practical good, solid things that people can do to change how they feel and how they experience aging. So I appreciate you coming on the program. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. 
That's our show for today. If you enjoyed it, please tell your friends about us so we can reach more minds. Give us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts and send in your questions on aging. Until next time, enjoy the chance to get smarter about growing older.